Hello and welcome to another Star Wars Black Series review. Uh, yeah, I've been very harsh in the past uh, of the three other Black Series stuff I've taken a look at. And honestly, a lot of older Black Series stuff are kind of ugly and crappy, at least for their price anyway. But you know what? They have improved quite a lot and everything from the Mandalorian wave looked really good. In fact, the stuff from before that, the loose Skywalker Rebel Pilot wave is pretty good with Bosk in there looking pretty good as well. So I'm actually interested in picking those up. Those do look like decent figures. You know, for the price and um, I did want to pick up the Mandalorian but they only had the carbonite one I didn't want that I want something to look closer to how it is in the show I didn't want all the glossy metallic stuff so I'll try and find the regular version uh, sometime later so anyway here we have IG-11 does this mean he's younger than IG-88 hmm survived longer though I think did IG-88 die who was the one shadows of the Empire I think that was, no, that was a different one. Yeah, IG-88 in Shadows of the Empire, and then there was another IG droid in Star Wars Dark Forces 2 Jedi Knight. Where Kyle Katan's like, leaving so soon? And shoots his hand off, so. Um, yeah, that was another IG droid. Mm, yeah. But anyway, I'm getting sidetracked here. Uh, how is this figure compared to, well, other figures I get? at about 6.7 inches tall pretty good and just for comparison here he is standing next to the original SH Figout Stormtrooper here is a model kit Star Wars astromech droid SH Figout Boba Fett SH Figout's Endgame Hawkeye a real bone Camarada DN a Mafex Aquaman and a soft final butt Godzilla he comes with a E11 blaster same as the Stormtroopers uh, it's painted just in the metallic, well, black with some metallic brush on it. And at the bottom there, there is a bit of a hole. And this is made of softish plastic. And so is this other accessory, this giant rifle, also softish plastic. And this one also has a tiny hole down there to peg onto the hands because the hands can't grip or hold onto items like regular figures. They're these little clamp things. So that would have been really annoying if they didn't you know, have some extra measures there to help hold his items. But that does mean that he will have trouble holding any other accessories from other characters. So you're gonna have to you know, use some blue tack or something to help out with that. Starting with the head here, it's pretty cool. Uh, there are a few different layers of plastic molded here. You got the outer layer, of course, with these red eyes. Those are molded inside, which uh, gives it a nice sort of a light-ish effect, even though it's just flat red. And uh, well, taking this is pretty cool. Gets the job done. As we move down, you see a lot more of the uh, other mechanical details. Some of it's hidden behind this soft strap. This strap has a hole there for the bigger rival to slot in. And I'm guessing the E11 blaster just sort of just goes in anywhere, something kind of like that. That kind of works. We got a few different color here. We got a few different colors here, different metallics. I think these are the same metallic colors used for the carbonite or carbonized version of the Mandalorian Black Series figure. It just reminds me of those colors, so they probably you know, used it here. I was like, hey, let's just use these on the other figure and make it like a special version or whatever. And uh, some of the other interesting things about this figure is uh, you've got these rubbery bits there that hide the joints. So that's that's kind of cool, kind of nice. It is in the show as well, these rubbery bits. So that's cool that they put that here. And we got these wires there. These, you do have to be a little bit careful with them. They're made of soft plastic. You've got one on his right leg and two on his left. Uh, you have to be careful because of depending how you bend his legs. You can you have to, like, just be aware which side these uh, cables will you know, bump off to. So, uh, you know, just so you don't overstretch or break them. So something like that's okay. You move like that. It's fine. Uh, same with this one. I probably want to move it. I think this side is fine. Just do that. So uh, the overall look of this figure is quite nice. I, I like the paint jobs. Uh, one thing that, um, say, for example, Bandai doesn't do quite right is a weathered effect. This droid looks weathered. He looks old and beat up. And he's not, not damaged anything, but the darker colors, darker tones does make it look quite nice. The overall tubing and piping details are okay here, and the joints. Because this is a droid, I think it gets away with having some of these joints showing up, because a droid would have these, you know, if it was made in real life, you know, if it actually functioned. Uh, you know, these aren't human beings, so having some joints visible is totally fine with me. And on top of that, some of the joints are, you know, somewhat hidden. For example, the elbows here, the joints underneath these straps. 
and uh, even these plates, right, the joints just a little bit. And the cuts where the joints are also quite good. So um, unlike regular Black Series where I would nitpick and rant, uh, I'm not going to do that here. So this is pretty decent. Now in terms of articulation, we've got the rotating head here. Uh, there is a swivel joint there because it is hindered somewhat by the strap. I'm totally fine with that. There's a bit of a rotating bit here. And then uh, this is thing, no, nothing down here. Right, that's it for the torso. And the arms have a swivel, and a swivel up here. Because it does leave a bit of a cut down there, that's fine. We got the clicky elbow. At first, I wasn't sure if this was moving or not, if there was a joint in there or not, because it was just that stiff. But uh, if you're afraid of breaking this, just get some hot water or a hairdryer, just blow it on there to soften it up just a little bit and get some articulation. And I do wonder how long this rubbery thing will last, because you know this is on a joint, so you know. Uh, rubber does wear out faster than harder plastics, of course. Uh, there's no articulation on the hand itself. There's a swivel joint here, so no hand movement. That's a bit of a shame. Uh, the legs go up and back like a really old-fashioned type figure. This is probably my least favorite joint. Oh, I almost hate these joints actually here. They just look really out of place. Out of it, you know, compared with everything else, these joints look really out of place. And of course, you've got the double joints here for both legs. Uh, there is a bit of a swivel here, but it does get stuck in the way of this arm plating. I'm fine with that because it also avoids uh, you rotating it too much and breaking these cables, so that's fine. And the feet have a rotating joint as well as a bit of a click on the swivel, but not enough. There are also pegs underneath here. Now, I will say that with these feet, this joint is quite hard to stand properly. So I always you know, rotate the joints out just a little bit, so you're standing in like a, what we call a Chinese an eight shape, because that's how you write eight in Chinese, left stroke, right stroke. So something like that makes it a e bit easier for him to stand, but um, his, uh, his actual joint, feet joint, are quite loose, and there's not enough pegs in there, so... He either needs to stand, or you need to stand him in the right pose, or you know, even if you get one of those plates with a peg on them, he's still gonna fall over because you know, if you clamp his feet down, he can still do that, and that would get quite annoying. So uh, yeah, hate the loose joints there, but otherwise the other joints seem to be fine. Now the peg system on each hand is slightly different. Like the E11 blaster can't fit in on this one because the pegs is a little bit too uh, like further back. So the pegs in this one just fine. This one's quite solid peg. It stays in there really nicely. Do a lot of posing, even animating so the guns won't pop out. This gun, however, is a bit on the looser side, but it gets the job done. So probably it just feels looser because the gun overall is bigger. So you put more like strength and force on it. Let's see, if I don't peg it in, yeah, it's just gonna fall out. So let me just pick that in again. And then we just get the elbow up. Now this rubbery thing, while it covers the joints, it does hinder articulation just a little bit and pushes back just a little bit. So you move your arms up as well. Just give them that look. Let's, they can do that, like in the show or the trailer. Not really a spoiler if it's in the trailer. And there you go, he can do that. That's pretty cool. Just as a quick update, I see Bandai has just like on one of their showcases or whatever announced the Mandalorian figure arts. It will be up for sale soon. And I actually think um, the for the Black Series being half the price of the Mandalorian SH figure arts, it is the better figure because it also has a slightly better paint job. Uh, with the, the red effects look much better, although it does have a hard cape, so that's really annoying. The SH figure arts does have a soft fabric cape, and it's a bit on the clean side, and of course is double the price, more than double the price of the Black Series. So I think either of them are good. Of course, I'm still going to personally prefer the SH figure arts just because of all the articulation movement and stuff. And you know, I, I like the cleaner look, but if you like something that looks like from the show and you don't want to pay that much, the Black Series one is definitely fine. And they also showcase, but not, we don't know when they're going to sell it yet, but they did showcase an SH Figuarts uh, IG-11 droid, which looks really good. Like they really get into the details of all the different tubes and pipes on their version of the droid. And it looks just amazing. If they release the SH Figuarts of that one, I might have to get that. It just looks so cool. Although, I would prefer if they release just like a Star Wars Bandai model kit, that way it'll be a lot cheaper and you can still get all the details. And honestly, painting a droid like this shouldn't be too hard because, you know, you just spray paint certain parts in certain metallic colors and, if you, and then you just get some like 
tiny brushes to fill in some certain details. And if you mess up, it's fine because you can finish the whole thing with a black wash, it covers up a lot of the mistakes and gives it a little dirty look. So that's pretty awesome. But anyway, so uh, I think the Black Series Mandalorian wins versus the S3 Gus because it's way cheaper and it actually has a proper like dirty look. Um, aside from the hard cape, I think it looks better. Uh, but the IG-11 droid, if Bandai actually releases it, looks does look so much better than what the Black Series 1 here. I mean, the Black Series 1 is good. It's perfectly serviceable, and I'm actually quite happy. This is the first Black Series where I'm really happy with it, and I'm not, aside from your know, nitpicks, I, I don't have anything bad to complain about it. But that sc 3 one just looks so good, and I'm, because I'm loving the Mandalorian series, I might have to get that. As for the Mandalorian himself, uh, I'm thinking if there will be a like season finale version of him instead of what we have now. That's the one I would want to pick up. So I might. I was going to pick up the Black Series one, but they didn't. They only had the carbonized version. I wanted the original version, so I didn't pick it up. And after seeing the as a figure arts version, I'm still not going to pick it up just yet because I'm thinking will there be a later version with his more completed armor look? So or even the face head that would be nice. So I'm not going to pick that up just yet although when the figure when the figure finally reaches in the shops i might be tempted to pick it up anyway so yes in conclusion i think this is a pretty good figure the overall molding of it or the parts and stuff are in fact quite detailed i like his overall mechanical look all the little pipes and tubes that come out and the paint job on him is a little bit dark a little bit dirty definitely gets the job done the joints are pretty good, they're hidden for the most part, especially for a robot thing, so even joints that do show up, I can totally understand them. It's not like a humanoid would have a cut fire or cut arm. This, this all makes sense, this is pretty good. The only downside to this figure is, of course, the feet and the legs, they make him really hard to stand. So Hasbro really could have chucked in a little plate there with some pegs, like a little stand for him to just, just help him out. Especially if you display a lot of these figures and you know what happens like when one falls it's like a domino effect and all of your figures start falling down and that can be very irritating. I'm gonna bet he's gonna be one of the ones that cause all the domino effects most of the time so uh, if you don't have any of those stands definitely blue tack him down so he doesn't fall over. And having the peg system for the guns that's that's pretty good that that it doesn't look out of place it looks fine on the robotic body and um, it's just avoided a huge ton of frustration for trying to clamp onto those guns. But of course that does mean it's going to make it really hard for him to hold any other accessories. But just probably blue tack that and it should be fine. Still overall for Black Series, I think Hasbro has actually improved the quality of their Star Wars figures. Although I did hear that the price is going to go up for these pretty soon. So that really sucks. And I'm going to put the points back down again because it's become more expensive. Still, for this wave at least, and from what I've seen online pictures, not the Hasbro pictures, they're all been photoshopped so they all can just, just sort off. But from what other people have been showing on their YouTube pages and photos online, the most recent Black Series waves have been quite good. So if you like Star Wars, you like Assassin's Droids, or just like some sort of cool killer robot on your shelf, I definitely recommend picking this figure up. And for more Star Wars stuff, I have picked up the SS Regards. Uh, Stormtrooper New Hope version and Return of the Jedi Darth Vader. They have, I guess you can say, reissues or remakes from what they released a long time ago. And I'll be comparing them to the original SH Figuarts Darth Vader and Stormtrooper that was released quite a few years ago. As always, you can support this channel by clicking the subscribe button and the little bell button if you haven't done so already, or the thumbs up or thumbs down button if you like or dislike this figure. As always, leave a comment below what you think about this wave or the new Hasbro Black Series stuff in general. And please share this video with other people who might be considering picking this figure up and hopefully this video will be useful to them. And of course you can head below to the Facebook link, Instagram, Tumblr, Imgur and all that stuff to check out the photos you've seen in this video. As always, take care, have a nice day, I'll see you guys soon and may the force be with you. Bye bye.